Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be on my feet and on my way. Well, I've got a short email here from a viewer, and he's not exactly setting the world on fire. But what I like about his email is he's making small incremental steps to get better. He's overcoming his urge to over pursue and to chase. And what I like about it is you kind of start to see the guy, it's like the pendulum sling swings from over pursuing, doing too much, the illusion of action, and it swings back the other way to where he's backing off enough, and then women are starting to reach out and pursue a little bit. You can tell he still struggles and he still is making some fuck ups here and there. I would say partly it's because he doesn't know the book well enough yet. But it's like what I try to do with these video newsletters is offer you a good perspective of because everybody's at a different level. And so I don't want to just show you nothing but success stories of people, but I also want to show people that are doing really well and I want to show you people that are fucking up epically and obviously everybody in between because everybody at some – no matter where they're at, they can relate to these things. Especially if you've been following my work for a while, it just reinforces the fundamentals and success principles. That's why you see the best players in the NFL or Major League Baseball or the NBA or any great actor or actress. They're always trying to get a little better each day. They're trying to make incremental improvements in who they were yesterday and that's what you're going to see here with this particular email that I'm going to go through. So I wrote a quote on this topic and then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, when you let go of who you are and start focusing on the actions you need to take in order to become the person you are capable of being, you will enable yourself to move forward, get unstuck and reach your full potential. By moving towards what you want and taking action in spite of your fears, you expand your comfort zone and move beyond who you are presently. The only way to reach your full potential is to do the things that you know you need to do but that scare the crap out of you. You can either choose to let your fears limit you and your potential like most mediocre people do or you can be one of the brave few who overcomes their fears and accomplishes the things that most people only dream of. And when I, I was when I was going through this today, I had a phone session with a client earlier today. He originally found out about my work because he had a relationship with a woman that he was dating that basically went sideways on him. And this particular woman turns out she was passive aggressive, and there were a bunch of other red flags that he ignored. That really, she's just not a good candidate. And what he's really been struggling with, with especially in the phone session I did with him today, was just letting go. Letting go of this woman that really wasn't good for me. Even though he's dating and he's hooking up with other women, he's still thinking about this girl from the past. And so he was asking me like towards the end of the phone session, it's like, why does this keep happening to me? Why, why am I still hung up on this girl even though she's really not that great for me? And so we also spent probably the last 15, 20 minutes of the phone session on talking about his career. And he works in law enforcement. But what he really wants to do is be on a tactical team, kind of like a SWAT team or an FBI's anti-terrorism tactical unit. That's what he really wants to do. And so he's working in basic law enforcement now. I said, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, how emotionally compelling is that to you? He said it's about a 6 or a 7. I said, well, how about being on a, ta a tactical response unit? What is that like? He says, that's definitely a 10. And... The thing is, he's been waiting for several years for a slot to open up in the tactical team that's in the branch of law enforcement where he works and just nothing's happening with that. I said, isn't it interesting that you're hung up on a woman who is not like loving you, she's not treating you the way you want to be treated and you're also kind of hung up on this tactical team that in essence doesn't want you to be a part of it because they've been telling you for years and years Oh yeah, just a few more years, just keep paying your dues and yeah, you'll you'll be on the team with us. But yet you look at their actions and they're not doing it. And I said 
I mean, there's literally thousands of tactical teams, all kinds of different ones from all different kinds of bureaus. But you're staying hung up and attached and focused on one because they potentially maybe someday, even though you qualify now, potentially someday they're going to want you to be a part of their team. So it's like professionally you're trying to date a team who really doesn't want you and personally you're trying to date a woman or you wanted to date a woman who doesn't want you either. And I said, what about going to a different city or a different state? He says, quite frankly, that scares the crap out of me. I say, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Because like in our lives, you always see themes. And this particular guy, the theme was, is like he knows what he wants, but yet what he's doing now is a six or seven. And what he needs to do is make a lateral move in law enforcement. And I just said, suggested is you need to be looking for people who want you on their team, who will welcome you with open arms. The same thing with a new girl. You want a woman in your life who wants you in her life, who wants you there. He says, well, why is it that I keep choosing that? I said, well, when typically people do these kinds of things, it's because deep down they don't feel they deserve it. And as I mentioned many times in the past, people will act consistently with who they view themselves to be, whether that view is accurate or not. And so if deep down you don't believe you deserve to have the job and career that you really want, you're going to stay hung up and hoping that this group of guys who after several years still doesn't want you to be a part of their team is going to change their minds and want you on there. And you're going to stay hung up on a woman who really doesn't want you because, again, you're acting consistent with who you view yourself to be. And he says, so what's the solution to that? I said the solution to that is to take action towards the things that you want in life, to move towards the things that you want to accomplish, even though they scare the crap out of you. He says, well, I am really comfortable where I'm at. I said, yeah, you're in this little box, but you're not growing and you're not expanding as a man. And in order to become attractive, to become the kind of guy that you need to be to attract the quality woman that you really want, somebody that's way better than this girl that you're still kind of licking your wounds over, think about it. If what you're doing on a scale of 10 is only a 5 or a 6 or maybe even a 7 at times versus getting on a tactical team, which is a 10, you're going to be a lot happier. You're going to be a lot more alpha. You're going to feel a lot more successful. You're going to feel a lot more confident, which is everything that masculine energy embodies. Duh, common sense says the happier you are, the more successful you are, the more you feel like you're making progress in your life, the more attractive you're going to be to members of the opposite sex. The more swagger you're going to have, the more confidence you're going to have, the cockier you're going to be. And therefore, the quality of the woman that you're able to attract is going to be a lot higher as well because if you feel like you're mediocre or your life is mediocre, well, you're basically going to attract mediocre friends and lovers. So I thought I'd share that with you. Now we're going to go through this particular guy's email and see some of the wins and successes that he's he's going through. He says, hey, Coach Wayne, I just wanted to drop you a line and say thank you. With your help, I was able to pull my head out of my ass. Well, I'm glad I could help you pull your head out of your ass. I was freshly divorced and always had a thing for a very special woman in my life. I pursued her and was able to spend some very good quality time with her. She's a single mom with two wonderful kids. And I was still kind of trying to find myself while trying to over pursue her. See, I talk about this a lot. You've got to be happy with yourself. You've got to feel like you're successful. And if you don't feel like you're successful, it's going to be very hard to attract a really great high-quality woman into your life because you still got your own issues to work on. you still got to get to a place where you feel like you're awesome, just like I was talking about this other client that I did a, a phone session with today. At the end of the day, deep down, he doesn't really feel like he's that successful even though he's got a good career and he's making good money. He's enjoying what he's doing but he's not loving what he's doing and therefore that shows up in every area of his life. He says, of course, as predicted by Coach Corey Wayne, I slowly pushed her away. 
I could tell I was still at least a five or a seven in her eyes, but I was a mess inside thinking that she was the answer to all of my problems. So in other words, you're looking at her and thinking, hey, she's going to make me happy. She's the answer to all my problems. Well, you get somebody like that when you're still not happy yourself. And then once that newness wears off, once you realize at the end of the day you're still unhappy yourself, then you won't be putting the effort in to maintain that relationship and it will just dissolve. That's why you got to get your shit handled personally first. The idea is that you become a happy, complete, whole person yourself and then you attract somebody into your life who also is happy, whole and complete so the two of you can come together and share your completeness. He says, we stayed in very light contact, mostly me. And as I started to follow your work, I applied a lot of your teachings for healing myself and started to work on me. It's like what Jim Rohn said many years ago. And this is such a great piece of wisdom. He said, I'll take care of me for you and you take care of you for me. He says, well, I stopped the bullshit texting and phone calls and emails and I started to feel better almost instantly. I continue to work on myself with exercise, diet and working on my purpose. I have had other women starting to reach out to me as fuck buddies but I'm still feeling like I'm not where I want to be yet and I'm starting to get to really know myself again and I have not acted yet. He says, well, guess who reached out to me tonight? Oh yeah, that very special woman. So we obviously he's known this particular woman for a while and she's the, – the difficult thing, the uphill battle for him is that at this point, she's already kind of formed an opinion of him and the way he is. And so he's going to have that working against him versus somebody that he just met. It's a lot harder to reattract somebody who you screwed up with and who's formed an opinion of you versus doing the right things from the moment you meet somebody brand new who doesn't know you yet. He says, yes, the one I did not give time to think about what a freaking catch I am. So his problem was he never – remember, I talk about this all the time. It's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And if you never give the other person the time and space to wonder about you, to think about you, to form an opinion of you, to think about how they feel about you, that attraction level is never going to grow to the point where they feel like they can't live without you. He says, so tonight – was a test of what I've learned from you. I agreed to stop by for a couple of hours and see her and her kids. We had a great evening that ended with a hug, which I was cool with as her, her kids were right there. Yeah, well, that kind of sucks, but I still would have gone in for the kiss. I would have said, hey, kids, let me borrow your mother for a second. I would have gone out the front door, closed the door behind them, and then gone for the kiss. You got to think about those things ahead of time logistically. Because you don't want to fucking be wasting your time going out on dates with somebody who's still thinking of you as a friend. But the good news is she's reaching out to you. She's doing a little bit of pursuing. You're giving her time to miss you. He says, well, coach, here's my point. I'm not a freaking mess inside and I feel centered. Test passed. First step. I'm a centered man. I don't feel like it's her or my life is over anymore. So in other words, you're getting to that place where you have the desire for her but you no longer feel like if you don't have her in your life, you're somehow less of a man or less of a human being. Because at the end of the day, you've got to give the other person the space to choose you as well. It's just like I was talking about the guy in law enforcement. The tactical team that he wants to be a part of is not trying to keep him. Neither is this woman that he was once dating. Never try to keep somebody in your life who doesn't want to keep you in theirs. You have to come from that place. He says, my God, does this feel amazing? If it turns into something or not, I really don't care anymore as I am in control of my emotions again. I am a catch. When I am ready, I will have the girl of my dreams. See, that's great. You got the right attitude. He's working on himself. He knows he's not there yet. He's getting to that place where he's backing off enough to give that other person the chance to reach out, which she obviously did in this case. If she reaches out to you and for those of you who have walked away and are hoping the ex or the person you screwed up with 
reaches out to you in the future, when you give them the chance to do that and they actually do reach out, well, guess what? There's still hope. There's still a chance. Just because you walk away, it doesn't mean that the other person is going to come running after you. The only way they're going to reach out and come after you is if they still care about you, if they still value you and perceive you as being a catch. They're not going to let you go. He says, do I still have a thing for her? Yes, but I'm not a freaking emotional basket case because I've got chicks that just want to hook up. That's why it's so important, especially when you're learning this stuff, that you have lots of options in your life. And you're not just focusing on one person who you screwed up with previously and waiting for her to come back. He's taking action. He's doing things. He's moving towards the things that he wants in life instead of sitting around waiting for it to happen. He's going out there and looking for somebody or multiple people that are new because repetition is a mother of skill. The only way you're going to get better is if you practice this stuff. So he says, Coach, I was really fucked up and your words made a big difference in my life more than you know. Thanks again. Well, thanks for sharing. Again, it's small incremental steps. I mean this guy, you know, he's not where he needs to be or where he wants to be and he admits that. He knows that. He knows it's a work in progress and that's a good thing because I know a lot of people watching this video, they're at the same place that he's at and that's what's good about it. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 